All right, this is the next lesson in geometry. It is called trigonometric ratios. Now the unit is called right triangle trigonometry. And we have not done any trigonometry yet, but that changes now, as you can tell by the lesson title, trigonometric ratios. Okay, so one definition to start. I'm sure you can take a wild guess as to what it is. Yep, trigonometry. Trigonometry is the branch of mathematics dealing with the relationships of the sides and angles of triangles with the relevant function of any angles. It comes from the Greek words for a triangle and measure. Should I have quotes right there too? Okay. There are six trigonometric functions. First one is called sine. And that's abbreviated S-I-N. Now, for this class, we're, gonna, we're just going to focus on the first three. I'm going to give you all six. Next one is called cosine. That's abbreviated C-O-S. And the next one is called tangent. That's abbreviated T-A-N. So again, those are the three that we're going to focus on. Uh, let me just give you all six now so you have them, and so you've heard them before. Next one is called cosecant. Abbreviated CSC. The next one's going to be called secant, abbreviated SEC. And the last one will be called cotangent. That's abbreviated COT. Okay. Uh, but like I said, we're not going to do all six in this class. We're just going to do the first three in this class, sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, I gave you all six, so you've heard them before, and you'll do these three in future classes. But we're just going to focus on the first three for all the class. There is an acronym that you definitely have to know. It is called SOKATOA. SOKATOA. Make sure you have that acronym memorized. I said we're going to focus on just these three. This S stands for sine. This C stands for cosine. And this T stands for tangent. The O and the H are going to stand for opposite and hypotenuse. Okay. Opposite and hypotenuse. So again, the acronym is very important. Sine is going to be connected to opposite and hypotenuse. The C, the cosine, is going to be connected to adjacent and hypotenuse. Toa, tangent's going to be connected to opposite and adjacent. So you have to memorize that acronym. So, ka, to, toa. So, ka, toa. So, ka, toa. You can pause this video to read through this if you'd like. I'm going to go over what this means on the next page, off to the side somewhere. Um, but the sine of an angle is the ratio of the length of the leg opposite the angle to the length of the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is the ratio of the length of the leg adjacent to the angle and the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the ratio of the length of the leg opposite the angle and the length of the leg adjacent to the angle. Okay. So before we do the actual examples, let me draw a triangle. Uh, let's label this angle. We can do any, any letter we want. Let's just do X. And again, this unit is called right triangle trigonometry, so we're doing this only with right triangles. But let's, let's focus on angle X. Okay, let's focus on angle X. This is the hypotenuse. 
You should know that already. The hypotenuse is always the side across from the right angle. Okay? The hypotenuse trumps everything. So the hypotenuse is always the side across from the right angle. Opposite. You should know what opposite means. Suppose I said go walk to the opposite side of the room. Okay? What side is opposite angle X? What side is across from angle X? This side right here. So this is the side that's opposite angle X. Remember, we're focusing only on angle X for this demonstration. And you should know adjacent means next to. You did that earlier in the year. So what side is next to angle X? But not the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the hypotenuse, okay? That trumps everything. The hypotenuse is the hypotenuse. So this is the adjacent side to angle X, okay? So I have six examples today. Uh, we have two introductory examples. Example one, write the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios for angle K, okay? Write the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios for angle K. So since we're focusing on angle K, I'm just going to put like a little star right there just to, to help us out. That's the angle that we're focusing on. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write down sine, just S-I-N for short, of capital K for the angle. Sine of angle K equals... Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So you might want to do this. You don't have to, but this is the hypotenuse. You might want to label it ahead of time. You don't have to do that, though. And what side is opposite angle K? This one right here. This is the opposite side to angle K. What side is adjacent to angle K? This side right there. So if I say what's the sine of angle K, that equals, according to our acronym on the first page, so ka toa. And in fact, I'm going to write that down on a separate piece of paper. That way I don't have to keep turning back to it. Okay? I'll do that in blue. So Toa. But sine, so, S-O-H, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite 11 over hypotenuse 61. You know what? Since we're doing notes, let me jot that down. That way you can see what I'm doing. Opposite over hypotenuse. You don't have to write that down on the test of quiz. I'm just doing it now so you see. So 11 over 61. Now, if you could simplify that fraction, you would. But you cannot simplify 11 over 61. So I'll leave it like that. And I'm going to say it's approximately 0 0.18. I'll give a decimal as well. Let's do cosine next. Let's do cosine of angle K. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, according to our acronym. Adjacent, 60, over hypotenuse, 61. If you can simplify the fraction, go ahead and simplify it, but you cannot simplify that fraction. So I'll leave it like that. And I'll write it as a decimal also, approximately 0 0.98. Now, sine and cosine can be anywhere from, um, well, for this class. Let me ask you this question before I tell you. Can the sine or the cosine, can either of these numbers be more than one? Think about that for a minute. Can these numbers be more than one? The answer is no, because the hypotenuse is always the longest side, 
So the denominator is always going to be bigger than the numerator. So sine and cosine cannot be more than one. Okay? Tangent can be more than one. So let's do tangent next. Tangent of K equals, according to our acronym, it equals opposite over adjacent. So according to our diagram above, opposite over adjacent, 11 over 60. Uh, you cannot simplify 11 over 60. But I'll say as a decimal, it's approximately 0 0.18. Now, tangent can be more than one. It, it is not always more than one, but it can be more than one. For example, if I said tangent of j, well, tangent of j, these would be switched, actually. So you'd have 60 over 11, which would be more than one. Okay, example two, let's do the same thing for angle A. So since I'm talking about angle A, let's put a star right there. That way you see what angle we're looking at. Okay, this is the hypotenuse. I'll go a little faster this time because we just did one like this. That's the hypotenuse. Opposite angle A would be seven. Adjacent to angle A would be 24. Okay, so let's run through these. Let's do sine of A first. Now, you don't have to write this, but I'll put it opposite over hypotenuse according to the acronym. You don't have to write that on a test or quiz. Opposite 7 over hypotenuse 25. That simplifies to exactly 0 0.28. Let's do cosine next, cosine of A equals adjacent over hypotenuse. According to the acronym. So 24 over 25. 0 0.96. And finally, let's do tangent of A. Tangent of A equals opposite over adjacent according to our acronym. Seven over twenty-four. Seven over twenty-four. Now that decimal comes to approximately 0.29. So I'll put the approximate symbol. The two ones above came to exact decimals. So I put equals equals. Okay, so those were introductory problems. Now we're gonna get some real examples. Okay, with number with um actually solving. Okay, so give me one second. Okay, so before we do example three, um, you have to make sure whatever calculator you're using is in the right mode. Okay, there's two modes in your calculator um, when dealing with angles. There's something called degree mode, and there's something called radian mode. You want to be in degree mode for these. Okay, degree mode. You want to be in degree mode. So um, here's what I want you to do. As you're watching this video, I want you to try these on your own to make sure you have your, you know how to get your calculator or whatever you're using in the right mode. Okay. But for my calculator, what I'm going to do is if I go to mode right there on mine, on mine, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's radian right there, and there's degree right there. You want to make sure you have degree selected. Okay? You want to make sure you're in degree mode. Degree mode. Okay? So, my first question. For this one, you need to focus on one of the angles that's not a right angle. Okay? You ignore the right angle. We're going to use an angle that's not the right angle. So I'm going to use this one right here. I mean, you could say this is 27 and work off of that, but we're going to I'm going to focus on this angle right there, the 63-degree angle. 
right? And my question is, which trig function are we going to use? Are we going to use sine? Are we going to use cosine? Or are we going to use tangent? Well, let's focus on this angle. This is the hypotenuse. I'm going to label that. And the x is the opposite side. So this is the opposite side to this angle. Okay. So I'm working with opposite and hypotenuse. Which, uh, which trig function matches that? Sine. Sine has opposite and hypotenuse. So we're going to use the sine. We're going to use sine. Okay. Remember, the acronym. So... Toa. So we're using the one with opposite and hypotenuse. So we're using sine. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say sine of 63 degrees so katoa. It equals opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. X over 12.9. So, I mean, if, if I said solve this for x, suppose I had x divided by 2 equals 7. I said solve that for x. You would multiply each side by 2. You would say x equals 2 times 7, and you would say x equals 14. We're going to do the same thing here, okay? I'm going to multiply each side by 12.9 to get x by itself. So what I'm doing is I'm doing x equals 12.9 times sine of 63. So that's what we're gonna, you're going to type that in your calculator. You're going to do 12.9 times sine of 63. There should be a button on your calculator somewhere that says sine. So hit that. And then put the 63 in parentheses, preferably. 12.9 times sine of 63. Make sure you put the 63 in parentheses. Make sure you're in degree mode and try it now and make sure you get the same exact decimal as me. It should be about 11.4939 And it says round the name is 10th, so x is approximately 11.5. Now you should know ahead of time your answer has to be less than 12.9 because the hypotenuse is always the longest side. You can throw on the centimeters if you want to throw on the, the uh, units. All right, 11.5 centimeters. Let's try example four. So again, the first thing you have to do is figure out which trigonometric function you're going to use. Is it going to be sine? Is it going to be cosine? Or is it going to be tangent? Okay. So let me write the acronym up here. So katoa. We're going to focus on the angle that's not 90. So we're going to focus on the 39 degree angle. Again, you could also use this angle. You could say that's 51 and then work off of that. Well, let's just, just work off of this one right here. Okay. This is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. And this is the adjacent side. So which trigonometric function has adjacent and hypotenuse in it? Cosine. So I'm going to say cosine of 39. Again, notice how I'm writing it. Equals. Adjacent over hypotenuse, so 20 over x. Now you're going to have to solve this for x. Now, there is a little shortcut to solve this for x using some algebra trickery. Uh, think about it like this. Suppose I say...
10 equals 30 divided by 3. Would you all agree with that statement? Yes. What if you were to switch these two? What if you were to switch those two around to get 3 equals 30 over 10? Is that still true? Uh, is that still true? Yes. Okay. 30 divided by 3 is 10. And 30 divided by 10 is 3. So the shortcut, the trickery, to solve this for x, you could just switch these two. Just switch those two. x equals 20 divided by cosine 39. That's what you're going to type in your calculator. Okay. Uh, try it on your own to make sure you're doing it correctly. But you're going to do 20. Divided by, and there should be a button down below that says cosine. And put the angle 39, put that in parentheses. And that's the answer you should get. Twenty-five point seven three five one nine one three two. And the question said nearest tenth. So X is approximately 25.7 meters. And remember, that was the hypotenuse, so that should be the biggest side in that triangle, so you should know it should be bigger than 20 automatically. And let's do one more like this. Now, we just did sine and cosine. So I wonder what example, what type we're going to do for example 5. I wonder. This is not amateur hour, okay? So it's probably going to be tangent this time. Uh, but let's just double check. So, ka, toa. Let's figure out which trigonometric function we're going to use. Let's focus on the 48 degree angle. This is opposite that. That's the hypotenuse. We don't have that. We don't want that. We want this one, the adjacent side. Okay, so this one's going to be tangent. So I'm going to say tangent 48 equals x over 14. Solve this for x. x equals 14 times tangent 48. There should be a button down below that says tangent, okay? On whatever calculator you're using, 14 times tangent 48. 15.5 when you round it, so x equals 15.54857521. x is approximately 15.5. There are no units, so I'll just leave it like that. Okay. One word problem to end it all off. Okay. To guard against a fall, a ladder should make an angle of 75 degrees or less with the ground. What is the maximum height of a 20 foot ladder? Let's label that 20 feet. Can reach safely. So that would be this. I'll label that as X. How far from the building is the base of the ladder at the maximum height? So I'll be right here. Why? Okay, so let's solve for x and let's solve for y. So for x, if we focus on the 75 degree angle, that's opposite. That's hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine. Sine of 75 equals opposite x over 20. x equals 20 times sine 75. 
20 times sine 75, type that in your calculator, and you're going to get x is approximately, I'll do, it doesn't tell you where to round, so I'll just do 19.3. We'll put that in a sentence in a minute. And let's solve for y. What is the, how far from the building is the base of the ladder? So I'm going to do cosine. 75 equals adjacent to y over hypotenuse 20. So y equals 20 times cosine 75. Okay, if that in your calculator, you get about, I'll say, I'll say 5.2 when I round it. And since it's a word problem, let's put them each in a sentence really quick. So the maximum height the ladder can reach is 19.3 feet. The ladder can safely reach. Nineteen point three feet. And the ladder would be five point two feet away from the house. That was a difficult lesson, okay? Um, you got to make sure you know the acronym, SOCATOA. You have to know the acronym, SOCATOA. Um, and you have to be careful. Sometimes you got to solve for X and it's in the numerator, so you multiply. Sometimes you have to solve for X where it's in the denominator, and that's when you divide. But make sure you know that acronym, SOCATOA.